Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Glass ionomer materials offer some non-traditional restorative options since they are chemically adhesive to dentin and cementum. The glass ionomers are marketed in two forms. One with a lower viscosity for looting or cementing purposes and one in somewhat higher viscosities for restorative purposes. Those designed for cementation are classified as type 1 cements and those to be used as restoratives are type 2 materials. The major advantages of glass ionomers are that they chelate with dentin and cementum, producing a chemical bond, possess good strength, slowly release fluoride in a fluid environment, diminishing the chance for recurrent caries, and they have acceptable aesthetic qualities. The purpose of this program is to demonstrate the use of glass ionomer restorative materials for the restoration of various lesions in a post-irradiated caries active mouth, restoration of cervical abrasion without conventional tooth preparation, and recontouring of removable partial denture abutment teeth. Patients with increased caries rates as a complication of xerostomia, secondary to radiotherapy or drug therapy, are excellent candidates for glass ionomer restorations. Because the glass ionomer materials slowly release fluoride, the probability of recurrent caries is significantly reduced. As a result of radiotherapy, this patient has several class 5 and incisal edge carious lesions associated with decreased salivary flow. In most older patients, incisal edge wear proceeds at a rate faster than the decay process so that incisal lesions such as these are rarely noted. However, in the irradiated mouth, it is not unusual to note aberrant caries patterns consistent with this patient's condition. Tray setups for glass ionomer restorative procedures are similar to those needed for composite resin restorations. Cavity preparation prior to placement of the glass ionomer restorative material is minimal. As illustrated here, a small round burr is used to remove only decay and unsupported tooth structure in keeping with accepted principles of operative dentistry. Mechanical undercuts are not placed, since retention will be obtained through chemical bonding of the glass ionomer to the exposed dentin and cementum. On excessively deep caries excavations, the dentin should be covered with calcium hydroxide. Two commercially available glass ionomer restorative kits are shown. Powders are mixed with designated liquids according to the manufacturer's directions. A variety of shades are available. Varnish is supplied with each kit, which must be used to cover and protect the restoration from saliva for ideally at least 24 hours prior to initiation of finishing procedures. However, when it is not practical to have the patient return the next day for finishing, this setting time may be reduced to two hours minimum. While laboratory studies have shown good bonding and adhesion to dentin and cementum, this is not the case for enamel. When adequate areas of enamel exist around a lesion, an acid etched retained restorative resin may offer better treatment. Correctly mixed glass ionomer is placed into the preparations with the tip of an explorer. The material is added in small increments to minimize the possibility of air entrapment and resultant voids. Once approximate contour is achieved, the material is allowed to harden. 
The glass ionomer restorative material should not be carved once the setting process has begun. As shown, glass ionomers pass through a rubbery stage during setting and will be pulled from the preparation if disturbed during this time. Glass ionomers share a common fault with the silicate cements of years past. They become chalky and white if not protected from the saliva for about 24 hours. Therefore, the surface of the restoration must be covered with two coats of special varnish after the material reaches an initial set. Allow three to four minutes for drying between coats. Even with varnish, the extreme outer surface will be chalky and must be removed. Therefore, a slight over contouring to allow for some loss of surface during finishing is suggested. Glass ionomer material can only have its best physical and optical properties when it has been correctly protected prior to finishing. Once set, preferably 24 hours later, the restorations can be shaped and finished with the aid of finishing burrs, white stones, and abrasive discs and strips. Liberal amounts of water or lubricant must be used to prevent overheating during finishing. The soft, flexible, abrasive discs and strips available today for finishing composite resin restorations are ideal for imparting a smooth, polished surface to the glass ionomer restorations. The finished restorations, as illustrated here, are mechanically functional, protective against recurrent caries, and aesthetically pleasing. Another application for the glass ionomer restorative materials is for the restoration of cervical abrasion. The glass ionomers are ideal for these situations since little or no preparation is necessary due to the chemical bond to dentin. Because the procedure relies upon a chemical bond between the glass ionomer and dentin, the dentinal surface must be thoroughly cleaned with a slurry of fine pumice and water. Pumice preparations containing glycerin and flavoring agents must not be used or bond impairment might result. The area is then copiously rinsed with water. The only preparation that is necessary is the removal of caries and any unsupported tooth structure. No mechanical retention is necessary. Following shade selection, the materials are proportioned and spatulated together according to the manufacturer's directions. The mixed and ready-to-use material should be less viscous than a usual composite mix. Complete isolation from salivary contamination during placement of the glass ionomer material is mandatory. Although less desirable, only cotton roll isolation rather than with rubber dam will be used in this example. Correctly blended restorative material is incrementally placed onto the appropriate tooth area using a suitable instrument. Once the cavity is slightly overfilled, the material is held under pressure using a mylar strip. After the glass ionomer restorative material has reached its initial set, it must be covered with two coats of special varnish, allowing three to four minutes of drying time for each application. When dry, the varnish will not flow under a gentle stream of air. Another contouring method is demonstrated in the patient's contralateral arch. The restorative material is contoured and carved with a suitable instrument that has been liberally coated with cocoa butter. The assistant should reapply the lubricant to the contouring instrument during this procedure. It should be emphasized that contouring must be completed before the material reaches its rubbery stage of set. 
As illustrated previously, the restoration must be covered with special varnish after it sets. A succession of burrs, discs, and strips of decreasing abrasiveness are used to contour and polish the restorations. This must be done using liberal quantities of lubricant or water in order to avoid a finished restoration that has a chalky surface. Such a surface is soft and will deteriorate rapidly. Cervical lesions treated in this manner restore missing tooth structure with a minimum of discomfort to the patient. The third of this program's presentations will demonstrate how removable partial denture abutment teeth may be recontoured in order that they provide favorable guiding planes, retentive undercuts, and vertical stops. Survey of the mandibular left cuspid and right lateral incisor indicates that these teeth have too little lingual surface area and facial undercuts for providing lingual guiding planes and facial retention. Additionally, these teeth require cingulum rests for vertical stops and correct force distribution. With the aid of a surveyor and the patient's cast, the desired contour changes are waxed onto these abutment teeth. This waxed cast is then duplicated in a suitable gypsum, such as Yellowstone. A transparent and relatively thick thermoplastic sheet is then heated and vacuum formed over the duplicated cast to create a matrix of the desired tooth shapes. After lubricating the interior of the matrix, restorative material is placed in the lubricated matrix and applied over the appropriately conditioned teeth. Materials placed by this method require only minimal finishing. A cast of the recontoured teeth shows the newly established lingual guiding surfaces, facial undercuts, and cingulum rests. Glass ionomer is used on dentinal and cemental surfaces, while resin is used on etched enamel. These new tooth surfaces may require periodic additions of restorative material since some wear is expected. Although this method of recontouring has proven to be successful, recontouring with traditional materials is still the treatment of choice. This program has provided the viewer with some alternative treatments by using type 2 glass ionomer. Because of its unique properties of chemical adhesion to dentin or cementum, this material may come to assume an even more diverse role in clinical dentistry. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.